Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this Family Bible Study Hour. Guess what? We're going to do a few uh, studies, individual studies, and today we're going to talk about health God's way. Our Father, as you've heard me state many times, gives us instructions in His Word on everything. He is the creator and former of these flesh bodies, and what a magnificent job when you really take a close look at the human body, the functions and the nervous systems thereof, uh, it's just really miraculous in a certain sense. For example, we all have fingerprints, and we, God didn't place them there for you to have a fingerprint record somewhere. However, it works out kind of nice that we're, not, we're all unique. But they were put there for the same reason that you put chains on your tires. Therefore, grip so that you can pick something up and hang on to it without it slipping or sliding. And then at the same time, he placed hairs on the back of the fingers so that if you ever get in a close spot, you can pull your hand away before the weight is totally upon you, hopefully. But just many things like that, it always fascinates me. It really does that he would take, let, let's just talk about the body for a moment. The body is made up basically of 206 bones, which is the skeletal frame that gives us uh, the ability to stand because of the muscles attached to that bone structure, the frame, that gives it mobility, that allows us to do all sorts of wonderful things in our life um, in fulfilling God's plan or man's plan. And this, these muscles, of course, attached by ligaments and tendons and so forth. Muscles rich in blood be, and heal rather rapidly, whereas a ligament or a tendon it takes forever to heal because of the supply. Now, then within that, we have the central nervous system that uh, is centered in the backbone of the body that sends all kinds of messages, you know, keeps the pump pumping and, and uh, he even, uh, I didn't really intend to go to this detail, but I will. There is a nerve that runs even outside of the backbone that is kind of a backup, you might say, to the heart that keeps it uh, beating and you breathing. He did all these things that are so miraculous. And then, then the body is made up basically within, we have solid and hollow organs. And within these solid and, um, and uh, hollow organs, we, the hollow of course being the vascular system, of course the intestine, and the solid organs, let's, let's take one example, the kidney. Do you realize that eating the best food that we can buy, the cleanest, that without your kidneys functioning properly, and they happen to be a solid organ, that God created them whereby they remove the poisons from the very cleanest of foods that we can find. And if you were without your kidneys to cleanse, to filter, uh, the blood and the poisons from your system, you would die in less than a week. It probably, I think, about three days if my memory doesn't fail me, that if you don't, if you did not have the blood cleansed uh, by um, some method at the end of three days, if your kidneys stop like a dialysis machine, you're dead. Because even eating our best, our very best, we take in enough poison that it would kill you in a three-day period. That's really when you realize how our Father created that option 
that cleansing agent within our bodies, that how intelligent he was in forming this body. Now, the probably one, and I'm going to just speak generally today, and then we're going to go to God's Word a little later and have some further instructions. But I just want to go to some of the little habits that sometimes mankind can um, fall into. And that is um, the way he eats, his timing of eating, and so forth. That we have, uh, I'm going to give you PNBC. If you'll remember that little formula, first the P is priorities. Um, we have, as a matter of fact, I'm going to pull up a scripture right now. When I say priorities, I think I want to call up 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. And you're told here by Paul, it is so in a natural body. That means you're given birth with a natural flesh body. It is raised a spiritual body, meaning you have two bodies. You have a, a physical and a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So where are your priorities? And certainly your priorities are with the spiritual body. Don't ever forget that. If you fail to feed the flesh body, it's going to die. It'll starve to death. Well, your spiritual body is the same way. If you don't feed it, it will die. And which is the more severe? If the flesh dies, then you cease to live in this earthly age as a human and um, uh, the spiritual body returns to the Father that gave it. But if the spirit body dies, then you lose the eternity. So your priorities should not be too difficult if you wish to be with our Father for the eternity because the, spiritual, the priority rather will always lie with the spiritual body. That is why I spend the majority of my time teaching and feeding and nurturing the spiritual body of people in this uh, congregation. Now, then we have the N of that PNBC, natural. It's well that you partake of natural foods as much as you can, natural being the... Um, herbs of the land. There are many people will um, mow their lawns and cut down uh, bonset and other herbs that grow wild all over the U.S. and then rush to cut themselves mowing and rush to the grocery store or somewhere and buy a medication and pay ten times the price of what the bonset was there all the time free. Now I'm, I'm not going to go into herbs some people get all confused about herbs. They're, they are for, and you have to know what you're doing, and I, don't, I don't, do not even recommend, unless you intended to make a very thorough study of it, you, you want to stay away from herbs in the wild. Though in my lifetime, I've helped dig many plants for uh, my um, senior, um, the elders of my family, in treating uh, certain things down through the years. And I will not go into that. And, uh, be, but one thing that's probably more confusing about herbs is a lot of people don't know the difference between a loco weed and, and lamb's quarter. <laughs> lamb's quarter are some of the best natural greens and it grows wild in many of the states. But I mean, I'm serious. It's a very, it's a wonderful greens. But um, loco weed, it'll do just that. It'll make you loco. And a lot of people get in the habit of smoking a, a part of the family of the loco weed, and they get lo more loco than ever. So be that as it may, we don't do those sort of things. So they can help you or they can hurt you. And, but the natural foods is the best way to keep your uh, balance and speaking of balance, let's go to the B. That is the balance. You balance everything. You balance your diet. You learn how to balance a diet by knowing starches, the green and the yellow foods that are 
healthy for this body. And we balance that by taking supplements such as um, vitamin C, E, uh, so forth. And any of you that smoke something besides the hemp, I guarantee you, you'd better be familiar with vitamin C because vitamin C is the strongest, one of the best things. And I'm not, again, never think I'm recommending anything. I'm just talking about the natural and the balanced use of things. But C is very necessary for uh, even the immune system to, to assisting it in fight off impurities that come into the body and so forth. Be that as it may, balance your diet. Know when to partake of starches and so forth that gives you strength and power. And then the C, of course, is common sense. You just use common sense in all things, and that kind of falls back to the balance and that that is natural. Common sense, well, let, let's go back to the kidney for, um, for a moment. Common sense. What does the kidney use basically to flush the poisons from the system? Water. The kidney's got to have water to flush and cleanse the system. That's probably a statement uh, a, and that's oversimplistic, but be that as it may, it's, it's really common sense. That's, that's good. It is a good way to think of it. How many of you ladies, if you had a greasy frying pan, if I were to give you two thimbles of water, how would you like to cleanse that frying pan with two thimbles of water? You would, you would rebuke, uh, rebel rather in trying to cleanse that greasy pot with two thimbles of water, and yet that's the way people are. They will, they, we are meant, or we should drink eight glasses of water a day. And most people drink eight cups of coffee a day, or eight glasses of coffee, I'll use it to say that, and maybe one glass of water. Uh, balance. Common sense. Now, um, I people will get up early in the morning and they'll hit that Java. Well, I, I I enjoy coffee also, but if you will drink the same amount of water as you do coffee in the morning or any time of the day, it will not hurt you nearly as as much as if you just simply live on liquid soft drinks, things of that nature, to get the liquid for your kidneys. Because look how you're overworking them. You're going to have kidney problems. You're, you're not giving the body a, a chance. You're not using common sense to help the body flush out those poisons. And all sorts of things can transpire from kidney stones to the urinary tract problems to bladder problems to you name it. You've got to use common sense, and you've got to do it natural like God's way is. And God gives us some very natural advice that we'll, we'll be getting into it here. Um, the body is another thing people do, and this is, probably, uh, this is probably, again, back to common sense. And again, never consider this as medical advice. This is simply health statements. I am certainly not an expert in the medical community, though as, as an emergency medical technician, I have had considerable medical training, that and in, in the service, but be that as it may, this is advice on health. The flushing of the system is only part of it. Good, natural, nourishing food is necessary from the very soil itself, the, those things that are grown and that we consume in a balanced diet, that they pass through the system in the vascular system, the blood veins, we will call them. It, it uh, helps the metabolism flow to the outer far reaches of the very body itself, the lower and the upper extremities. And that also helps flush and to feed. But what happens if the old alarm goes off in the morning, and too many people are guilty of this. The old alarm goes off in the morning, 
you hit the shower, grab a quick cup of java, coffee, and a piece of toast, and you go out and expect to do a hard day's work, and about 10 o'clock you say, I'm just tired. I, I just feel like I'm about played out here, and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, what would your car have done if it had been empty of gas and you put the equivalent of a piece of toast into it and got halfway to work and it quit you? You're not feeding yourself. Breakfast should be one of the healthiest, uh, uh, biggest meals, at least as big as the noon meal. You should put food in the tank. Why? Because you're going to burn it and you need it and it lifts you up and you can even partake of more starches in the morning without it hurting you because they'll stay with you. In many athletic departments they're beginning to give starch instead of orange juice and other things uh, when uh, for long distance runners and so on and so forth. Okay, But you have to feed the body. But what do they do? They get there at 10 o'clock and then probably another cup of coffee and oh man, those glazed donuts look good. I'll pop one of those in the old oven and that sugar will pick you up and then let you down. And by noon, you are, you're hurting. You, you're abusing your body. It's hungry. So you go down to the quick trip and grab you a hamburger or something, you know, little grease in there with it, you know, stirred up real nice, you know, and they're good. I love a hamburger. Ain't no getting around it. It's good food. Uh, I mean, they taste good and they go good and it'll get you by. It may not lay, you know, put a few onions on there with it and it kind of begins to, about two o'clock in the afternoon, it may not set real good, but you know, it gets you by, that's for sure. Hey, we get home. Oh man, I'm starving to death. I'm, Really, I'm so hungry. Let's grab a steak here and we'll have a bunch of taters and we're just, I mean, let's just pile up the table. And eating the biggest meal at night, oh, I mean, it was good and I was starving. And you lean back and you say, oh, I'm a little bit drowsy. I think I'll just go to bed. And off to bed you go and you've tanked up, friend. You're going to go to sleep, but your stomach isn't. You've given it two days work. And it's going to lay there, and you're not working. And it's going to growl, and it's going to gurgle, and it's going to work. And you're going to wish you could sleep, and probably you are. But that stomach, do you know this is when most heart attacks happen? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of them. Overload that old thing and you go to bed and leave it working all night, you know, and um, it, uh, you're not working, so what, what is the stomach going to do with its uh, product? It's going to, if you're not burning it, it's going to convert it right into the lower derma, and you're going to have fat, ah, going to store it away for emergency, and gather up right in there, and boy, I mean, Wake up in the morning and you, you feel, I didn't really sleep good last night. Well, I would think not. I would, uh, you, you had a little time off, but your tummy didn't. And then you're going to hit the same routine. Grab that cup of coffee, piece of toast, you know. I'm a little tired, but I'm a can-do type person. I'm charging out there and I go with my glazed donut, maybe. But see, the stomach knows that he put that flat uh, fat over there for emergency. And it takes him a long time to break those cells up and get them back up there for food again. And it's not going to do you any good. So what's going to happen is probably just going to stay there, you know, and just build up right there for you where you'll always have that reserve. And I've seen some people that were really equipped for an emergency of going without food for a long period of time. Be that as it may, at night you should have juices and fruits, things that digest easily, and you should eat your, and, and I know, I know that I'm, I'm not preaching at anyone, I'm not teaching at anyone, we're all guilty of this at times. But don't make a habit of it to be full time. 
Have your heavier meals in the morning and at noon. And at night, when the work is done, partake of juices. They themselves are cleansers, you know. They really do. They kind of cleanse. And beware of these. You will hear, well, there's a wonderful diet out now. They found a volcano or some pit down in Central America that's got some of the best fungus in it in the world. And you can take that fungus and it'll just shape you up. God said, don't eat fungus. It'll make you sick. So diets should always be balanced within themselves plus lots of exercise. Get the old Nordic track out and pump that rascal. One of the best pieces of equipment ever made, and I don't have any stock in, in, um, in Nordic track, but I've got one that sure gets tired sometimes. I'm telling you, I work that rascal over. That's what gives me the ability to go out and climb mountains occasionally, even at my age. You can, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm in perfect hip, but health, but I never go to the doctor unless it's to take a flight physical to see if I can still fly uh, prop jets and airplanes of this nature and everything. And, and uh, if, if the medical community had to depend on me to support them, hey, they would, they'd be in trouble. We wouldn't have very many doctors because I don't need one. Uh, and that's not to say that doctors are not good. They're wonderful people, many of them led of God. I'm just saying... I thank God for my good health that I've never had to up to this point do that because I pretty well, not perfectly, but I pretty well practice God's health laws. So what a common sense, and here I intended to get into the scripture, but there are just so many things that we do to our bodies that a little common sense would take care of rather than... Um, uh, even uh, to, to give God's Word a chance to help us stabilize ourselves and so forth. Now, I want to go, we, we went there, I want to go to Colossians just for a moment. Colossians chapter 2, where we have a little bit about laws and statutes, because I want to talk about laws, ordinances, and statutes, if I may. And I'm going to take chapter 2 of the book of Colossians. I'm going to pick it up in verse 14. And then I'm going to do a little teaching about law, ordinances, and statutes. And it reads in verse 14, This was Christ's death on the cross. These were the things that were nailed to the cross with him. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. That's dogma. That was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Verse 15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's to say, in himself. Verse uh, 16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, and this is sacrificial meats now, okay? Or in drink, or in respect of any holiday, that means feast day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Don't let a man judge you on that. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come. You notice it didn't say which were a shadow of things to come which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. In other words, what did Christ do? What is it saying? Well, I just want to talk to you a moment before we go into the law concerning health foods. And again, I want you to remember priorities. Your spiritual priorities are far above health priorities. But then again, if you're not healthy, it's going to be very difficult to function for the Father uh, if you were hooked up like this man is, where I do one live broadcast every day, Monday through Friday, and then have to teach on weekends. Then you notice I have, I'm pretty well always here. I've, I'm not off on sick leave or anything. But your priorities must be, there. And I suppose what I'm saying, if I didn't pay pretty close attention, and again, no one's perfect. I don't claim to be perfect in health laws. But if you give the body just a little bit of help the way God created it, it'll, it'll make a big difference. 
I wouldn't be able to take care of the higher priority, which is to say spiritual things, which is to say, say sh enjoying this wonderful time we have together of sharing God's truth, common sense, priorities, that that is natural, and a balance between the two. So then it does become very important. That's what I, I want. I want you to keep the balance. I want you to remember your priorities. But if God mentions it, it is important for a very simple reason. We live in flesh bodies. All right. Now, law, ordinances, and statutes. What's the difference? A law, and don't you ever forget it, a law is a statement of something that is always true or that always occurs. Do you want me to say that again? One more time. Law is a statement of something that is always true or truth or that always occurs. Um, as an example, um, that is to say, so far as is known in a given set of circumstances. Now, we don't know everything, but so far, that's the explanation. Example, let's take some of the laws that are natural and are of nature, and let's take gravity. What happens if you pick both of your feet up at the same time? you're going to fall on your floor. Pow! You're going to fall. Why? The law of gravity. It is a truth. Now, man can rinky-dinky with it and fix him a propulsion system, and he can balance that law of gravity, but the minute you shut the power off of it, bam! You're, again, without a foundation, you're going to fall on your floor. So. That is a law, that is a truth, that is a fact. Now, let's, let's go to, um, to ordinances. Ordinances are usually always, and I'm going to use the word usually because I don't want to be real technical about this because our subject is health and I want to be specific in it as much as I can. So I'm going to say is usually, usually always ceremonial or sacrificial. As an example, Christ dying on the cross brought about a different set of circumstances whereby the ordinance of blood sacrifice is totally done away with. It's changed. It was only a shadow of His paying the price. All right? It was only a shadow, no more sin offerings. Why? He paid the price, a different set of circumstances. So this ceremonial ordinance is gone. It was nailed to the cross with Him, as it stipulated in Colossians chapter 2. Now a statute, and this is important, a statute is a rule or law governing a changeable situation or a set of circumstances. I want to say that one more time. A statute is a rule or law governing a changeable situation or set of circumstances. Now, the statute through the ordinance of sin offering, a circumstance changed that. And that ordinance or dogma is, is no longer the same. Because to go back to pure law, it must be of a truth. And the truth is that God, through the Son in the law, nailed it to the cross whereby we have, um, we have the ability now to not go through the shadow, but to go to the real entity, the body of Christ, as it was written, and ask forgiveness. He gives it if you're genuine, and, and uh, there we are. So, circumstances can change. Now, let's take some examples. Let's take some examples. I made this statement at one time that as Paul had stipulated, if there were not tender ears, that's to say a new Christian around, if a steak was offered in sacrifice to an idol, he said, hey, go ahead and enjoy it because an idol is nothing. To you who know better, an idol is nothing, so enjoy that steak. And I received a comment from that 
that the Bible has a scripture that says, eat nothing killed in the blood and offered to idols. I said, you're wrong, pastor. It says right here. But you see, there's a different set of circumstances there, my friend, and I hope you can catch it. We are not to eat something killed in the blood, never have been from the days of first butchering. We were always trained to bleed the animal, not to kill it in the blood, which simply means not to bleed the animal because blood is putrid. Now, that's part of the cleansing process. So it was not the fact that the meat was offered to an idol that made it unedible. It was that it was killed in the blood, meaning it was choked instead of bled. There's a big difference, all right? So circumstances and in understanding law, usually every given case, every given case in law ultimately has a different set of circumstances and that's why it's very difficult to teach law to a television audience because each person has a different set of circumstances and it could make it apply a little different in his case. Now, how, how intelligent is man? You know, we, we, hey, we're, we've got, you know, with the scientific community that we have, with the medical research that has gone on, we have really advanced. We have. There are some wonderful things being done. And I think to be able to take a transplant of a cornea of the eye from a person that was accidentally taken or whatever the case might be, and to give that to a blind person that they can take that same cornea and have sight, I think that's fantastic. Uh, Luke was a medical doctor. Medical doctors are fantastic. Uh, chiropractory is, is a good science within itself for uh, always remember, keep things balanced, and, and uh, if your shoe has a hole in it, go to a shoe cobbler. But if, um, if you've got a bad burn, well, you know, go to, or whatever, you know, go to a tailor if it's your jacket that's torn. Leviticus chapter 3, um, verse um, 16 here. Where am I? Leviticus 3, verse 16. I want to read that to you if I may, okay? We go to Leviticus 3, verse 16, and it reads, And the priest shall burn them up on the altar. This is to say your, um, your offerings of sacrifice. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. Listen carefully. This was the purpose. All the fat is the Lord's. What was that? Don't eat the fat. It belongs to the Lord. He doesn't want you eating it. Verse 17, it shall be a perpetual. Do you know what the word perpetual means? It's going to be with you forever. As long as you're in a meat body, flesh body, a perpetual statute, a circumstance, for your generations throughout all your dwellings that ye eat neither fat nor blood. That's important, beloved. The scientific community has come around and made this great discovery. We're eating too much fat. It was written um, 2000, uh, it was written 2000, um, 3000 years ago. Don't eat the fat. It's not good for you. It'll kill you. And don't eat the blood. Don't eat something that hasn't been bled properly. It'll make you sick. You know, God created these bodies, and he pretty well knows what he's doing. So man is fine. I mean, we are brilliant. We finally, with all the uh, departments of nutrition that we have and nutrition experts, we finally found the truth. Don't eat fat. Get on one of these low-fat diets. Go down there and buy a box of goodies, you know, that's got the flat taken out of it and pay a lot more for it. Yeah, but you don't have the fat. I mean, you know, man is sharp, really sharp. These people that never study the Bible finally caught up and are getting around to some of God's health laws. I don't mean that as an insult. I'm just saying it was there all the time. There was no need for 
all the research to find out fat isn't good for you. God said, it belongs to me. I can handle it. You leave it alone. It'll kill you. <laughs> okay. So, you see, sometimes we're a little slow in coming around to God's way. Okay. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop there for this lecture. And we're going to get uh, right into some of the creatures that God said we could partake of and those he said, leave them alone. And why? There's a reason for it. So you see, health God's way is a fantastic thing because you, didn't you wouldn't have to wait 3,000 years to grab hold of it. He gave it to us a long time ago. It's just that people are basically biblically illiterate and they're not familiar with the circumstances and again, most don't know the difference between a law, ordinance, a statute, or a commandment. And in this oversimplification, and, and you're safe with it. You're safe with, even though it is an oversimplification. Yes, we live in an area where we live, well, our laws is the law of precedent. Well, I'm sorry, yes, that's true. And it's the sorriest law you can have. Law should always be absolute. That's the only true law there is, a law that is absolutely of a truth. When you get into precedence, you got a little too much yin and yang, all right? And usually there's more yang than there is yin, right? and uh, more left than there is right, and vice versa, <laughs> okay? O always fish out of the right side of the boat and come up with God's truth, and it'll, it, it'll give you a shortcut to hell. I mean, after all, remember this. He created these bodies. He knows how to make them tick right. Don't abuse your body. Get a good night's sleep by doing it God's way, by using common sense. We will check out the foods in the next lecture. Don't miss it. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? Free introductory package. Say, this is something we would like to offer for a one-time gift to all the new folk that study with us. This introductory package gives you a monthly newsletter, which means each month you will receive a newsletter with a Bible study on it. Hey, raising funds? No way. We're not beggars. We're Bible teachers. That's what it consists of. A tape catalog that will give you all the topics that are covered and the Mark of the Beast tape. What is this Mark of the Beast? Is it really on your forehead? No, Satan's considerably more intelligent than that. It's in your forehead, which is to say, in your mind. Have you been deceived? This is a free offer to you, one time to each new student. Say, find out what's really happening and what the story is on the Mark of the Beast. All right, bless your hearts. There we are back again. Say, let's have the 800 number, if we may. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, all over Hawaii. And if you have a question in Canada, it's good there, too. Uh, if the spirit moves and you have that question, share it. We can no longer answer all questions because of the tremendous volume of homes that we go into. But, hey, we'll take a chance. Who knows? Those of you that listen by shortwave around the world, uh, your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. You've got a prayer request? He's your father. He knows you. He knows your mind. He even knows what you're thinking, whether you love him or not. And that's, that's his desire, is that you love him, because that gives him pleasure, and that's why he created you in the first place. Yes, He created your soul for His pleasure. That's, that's very biblical. The last verse of chapter 4 of the book of Revelation, as well as others. And hey, if you don't give Him any pleasure, I don't see much need in Him keeping you around. What do you think? I mean, it's a very sobering thought, but think about it. Let Him know you love Him today. Won't you do that? Father, around the globe, we come to you. We ask that you lead, guide, direct, touch, heal. In Yahshua's precious name, amen. I certainly um, hope that you're enjoying this lecture. It's uh, our old soundtrack got in pretty bad shape from when I made the first recording of that, and we're going to update it a little bit. 
and uh, Dr. Alexander, uh, we're so fortunate that we have the doctor's corner on this network and have a true medical profession. I'll never forget his first comments to me. He was, he had just, he said, uh, I have cut so many diseases out as a surgeon that I decided I would spend the rest of my life teaching people how to prevent cancer and other things uh, rather than preventive medicine rather than just cut it out. Well, it, he, it, we just thank uh, Dr. Alexander and I have to give him credit for bringing the scripture forth of God says, don't eat fat. He's a fantastic teacher. Okay, let's get into our questions here. We're gonna go to Mark from Pennsylvania. Please explain long suffering. Okay, let's take it as it is used in 2 Peter chapter three along about verse what, uh, eight or nine, seven or eight, somewhere along in there where God is long suffering and it is his will that all come to repentance. In other words, he hopes that everyone will repent, but he won't force someone to. Long suffering means patience, something that man is, most men are a little short of. Uh, I should say all men are short of it and some women are even short of it, but women have certainly more patience than men do. I can make that statement, and I think that every man will, well, no, not every man's gonna agree with that, but all the good men will, okay? How about that? I, I gotta stay in good with the ladies, hey, and it, it is a truth. Bob from New Jersey, are there any scriptures to back up Revelation 3.16 about, I will spew thee out of my mouth? In the first place, what does it mean, Bob? It's a figure of speech. It's a figure of speech that means, well, I'm trying to think of an analogy that I can use with that. Uh, none seems to come to mind. Uh, uh, get out of my sight, you know, take a hike. Take a hike is about the same thing. He's saying um, his mouth, of course, is where the truth comes from. And, and if you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, you're one thing one minute and a fly by night the other. He didn't want you. And it really means get out of my sight. And uh, that's what he's gonna do to them. And yeah, you can back it up all through God's word. Hey, he gets put out, uh, look at the kings, how he, what he did to Judah and the house of Israel. Woo, I think, think so, you bet he'll spew you out, which means put you out of his sight. Charles from California. Have you heard about the women who had, the woman rather, who had twins and one was from one man and the other from a different man? Uh, interesting, Genesis 4, 1 and 2, Cain and Abel. You bet, yeah. It's, it is a, uh, identical twins are from the same pregnancy. Uh, Non-identical twins are from two separate pregnancies, regardless of who the men were, but it can be two separate men. It has happened more than one time. Um, unfortunately, one of the fa first cases that was called to my attention, if I remember right, I think it was Germany, and uh, the woman had twins, but one was of one race and the other was a separate, of different race, totally, okay? Uh, Terry from California, Deuteronomy 32, is this the song of Moses? Yes, it is. You got it right. It referred to in Revelation chapter 15. David from Florida, where did Cain meet his wife? In the land of Nod from the six day creation. Was she there before Adam and Eve? Well, she was, she was there, all right? And um, she was probably migrated there before Adam and Eve on the sixth day. They weren't created until the eighth. I know I pretty well stand alone in that teaching and that's okay. Um, it's, it's a little difficult sometimes to see a thing and research it and document it and to have to stand against all other scholars. I really don't know of another scholar that teaches that but it's biblical. Ha-adam, the Adam was not created until the eighth day. Um, it's the, it's, it is fact, else I would not teach it because I know what a false teacher must answer to, to our father. That's why there were people in the land of Nod that Cain was able to take a wife from. Okay, Fran from Oklahoma. 
I purchased from you the Biblical Mathematics book. I find it very interesting, but on page 179, mid-page, it states, Our Lord's return to earth at the end of 42 months. I, I know there are many books that I recommend to study for a certain thing that the men taught rapture and other things as well, but I know that you're good enough and intelligent enough from our Father's Word that you can spot their shortcomings. That isn't the purpose that we, we carry the, the book because the man did a good work on um, the God's numbers. And uh, there is a possibility, incidentally, um, well, I, won't, I don't even talk about it, well, um, that uh, we could change books soon or add a different one. I don't know, but uh, not for that reason because I, I believe that I teach well enough and that you all are intelligent enough that you understand God's Word and when someone misstates it, you pick up on it. And I trust you that much and I love you for having that knowledge of studying deeper into God's Word. Thank you, for friend. Pat from Virginia. I listened to your study on Deuteronomy about murder, but I didn't get where you found that the murderer has to face the victim. Well, why do you think God wants to, where is the victim? Is with the Father. For to be absent from this body is present with the Lord. Why do you think the Lord wants him sent up there to play tiddlywinks? I mean, it's common sense, all right? Uh, Steve in Arkansas. My question is, in the first earth age, did we have free will to love God or not to love God? And the answer is, of course. Uh, Satan chose not to like we have today. If so, is that why Satan's pride led him to fall from grace as, and sin against God because of free will? Yes. Uh, Pastor Murray, you have been a godsend to me. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Keep going strong. We're going to keep going strong. You bet. Uh, this, this comes back to square one. There is one thing God will not do, and some could even say he could not do. And that is, he cannot create an individual and give that individual free will and have that individual guarantee that that individual will love him. What would that be? It would be fake love, and God doesn't want anything fake. But at the same time, nobody can order love. It's got to generate from within each individual Else it would be like a dummy doll sitting over here, love you God, love you God, love you God, love you God. How, how would you like to have all you men like to have a rubber woman that when you came home at night you wound her up and she said, love you hubby, love you hubby, no supper, but love you hubby, love you hubby. That, that would be a little fakish, wouldn't it? Uh, well, maybe that's the wrong analogy, but I think it'll get the point across. God wants natural love, all right? Mary from Rhode Island. Is receiving money back from your investments considered usury? No, no. Some people work with a hoe and some people work with uh, finances, all right? It's, it's your profession and that's, that's not usury. Basically, usury comes down to the point of uh, you shouldn't charge your brother usury, all right? John from Minnesota, I heard you say something flying to save your soul. Can you tell me where it is? that this is in the Bible, I, I sure can. It's Ezekiel chapter 13, begin reading about verse 18. It's talking about the daughters of God, meaning his bride-to-be, covering, sewing handkerchiefs to, to cover his outreach saving arms from people and teaching them to fly to save their souls rather than going into his word of truth. God says, I don't like that teaching people to fly to save their souls and cover my truth. Ezekiel 13, verse 18, begin reading there. Elaine, I don't believe that's Elaine, Elena from Florida. I watch all the time and my question is about genealogy. In Titus 9 it says, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies of contention, strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable, vain. That's true. But who in the world would, go, would want to go into foolish genealogies? Stick with real genealogies, true genealogies. 
not not uh, not foolish pandering, you know, of, and that sort of thing to that, uh, uh, and and even argue about it. But but the genealogies that God placed in His Word, such as Luke chapter three, I would hope that no one would consider them to be foolish because that's certainly not what it was talking about. They're very serious and they're very important. Isaac, don't mess with anything foolish, all right? Whether it be genealogy or what, it's just only a fool would do that. Isaac from California, your teaching has been an inspiration in my life. Thank you. Well, you're certainly welcome. It's God's Word that does that. My question is, can anyone who has, was born and died before the birth of Christ, can they be saved? Can they seek eternal life or are they automatically lost? No, no, no. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 and 19, Christ, while he was yet in the tomb, went all the way back to the time of Noah, which means the beginning, and preached to them. And you'll read on in the fourth chapter, of 1 Peter and find out that he freed or saved many of them, those that chose to be. God is always fair and he opened that salvation up to them in that manner. Ada from Ohio, please comment oh, on you must be born again and I thank you very much. Well, I'd be happy to. Let's see, you must be born again. Let's take... Um, John chapter 3, and the reason I single out a particular chapter is because I'm going to, I will be teaching, answering this from the Greek, and uh, Greek, different words can be translated uh, in the English, for, and so I want to specify John chapter 3, where it says you must be born again, but the Greek is you must be born from above. There was a group of people that chose not to be born from above. They rather left their habitation from above and came to the earth. And rather than being born of woman, they seduced woman and took her as a play pretty. And you'll find that recorded in Genesis chapter 6. You will also find in the New Testament, in the book of Jude, in the first six verses, the account of their having left their first habitation rather than being born from above. So the born again is really uh, not a clear understanding of the term meant by God, that you had to be born in the bag of water. You know, many people think, well, that's baptism. Well, if you want to call it that on that level of teaching, fine, but that's not what it's really saying, uh, you know, because it was meant that all should come here innocent and decide whether, who they would love. And thus, we have born from above. It's real easy to document whether I'm right or wrong on that. Don't, don't go by some man. Go by the Greek, the manuscripts, Christ's teachings. Take the word born again. And I, uh, the Companion Bible will even give you documentation, if I'm not mistaken. But the companion, the Strong's Concordance will. See what it says. See whether it should be again or from above. And you'll be pleased. Okay, William from Ohio. That, that's in, in a Strong's Concordance. Anybody can do that if you can work a Webster's Dictionary. And you could prove this old boy wrong. If he is, <laughs> he's not. William from Ohio. I accidentally shot and killed someone. I also served time for this. The whole time I was the whole time I was in prison, I play, I prayed for forgiveness and I repented from this sin. I feel like I have for, have been forgiven. I have devoted my life to God. Well, that's good. Deuteronomy 19 will answer your question for you. If it's an accident, it's not murder, all right? Uh, it, and it's sad that it happened, but um, an accident does not a murder make. And Deuteronomy 19 makes it very clear, giving the example that if a man's cutting wood <clears throat> and the heave or the iron flies from the handle and hits an old boy in the head and kills him, then he wasn't to be charged with murder. He was to flee to a city of refuge. And um, so 
that's called uh, accidental death. Uh, God understands that. Gator from Florida. But I would say at the same time, he also knows what was in your mind at the moment it happened. So that's why he can, he, his judgment is perfectly right. Gator from Florida. Or the elect, the ones that overcome Satan's rebellion in the first earth age. That's right, world age here. Can the unpardonable sin only be committed by the elect and can the elect fall in the second world age? Well, I don't think it's possible. I cannot conceivably understand in my mind how anyone that knows who Satan is bow to him. That turkey has created all these problems from day one coming out the gate. And anybody that could love him ought to go to hell, all right? That's just the way it is. That's the way I feel about it. Therefore, all of God's election know that he's coming pretending to be Christ, and that in itself is an abominable thing. And most can't wait to tell him what they think of him. Of course, we're not to premeditate that. We have to open up to the Lord Jesus Christ, Mark chapter 13. And so it is. But uh, I don't think it's possible, all right? Um, and I'll have to let that one go till tomorrow because they're saying I'm out of time. Don't miss the last lecture on health God's way. That's really the only true health there is. And it was written so long ago, not long after he made these bodies. It's kind of the instructions that go with the body telling you how to operate it, okay, successfully. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, and um, bless God, he will always bless you. This is the most important thing, though. It's really important. It brings God's love into your family. It wells your family together. And that's this, to stay in his word every day with all this wonderful information. Stay in it. Every day in it's a good day, even with problems. You know why? Jesus, Yeshua, is the living word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. You have been viewing the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you are interested in obtaining more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer includes the Mark of the Beast audio tape, a newsletter with a written Bible study, a complete audio tape catalog, and a list of reference materials available through Shepherd's Chapel. You may request our free introductory offer by telephone. Call 1-800-643-4645, 24 hours a day to request the offer. You may also request by writing, Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. That's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us and serious Bible students around the world for our next in-depth Bible study, Monday through Friday at the same time. Thank you for watching and God bless you.